This week we're going to talk about five little tips to help you with preparing your models when you're coming out of Nomad and going to a 3D print of, of any type really. So we'll just cover five of the main ways that I get my stuff ready before going to print without having to go to something like ZBrush. So you've come to the end of your design and you've got your character and your or something that it's stood on and, and it's looking quite good with all of the um, post-processing on, but the base isn't level at all. And we need that to be level for, for us to be able to make it stand up. So there's a couple of things we can do. And obviously one of them is to add a base, um, another base, which we'll talk about it as another tip. But let's just talk about what we can do at the bottom here. So just to make it easy for you to see, I'm going to just do a couple of things. So I will um, start in up here. I'm going to turn off. Um, so show the painting, first of all, turn that off. I'm going to go outline and that'll outline anything that I'm working on. And I'm also gonna turn off all post-processing at this point. So you'll see it looks radically different there. And I might even, just to make it a little bit better, I'm gonna change the background to just a gray there. And then to make it even better, I'm gonna turn all the lights off, and I'm now only relying on just on the um, environment lapse, the HDRI. And what that gives me is I can see much more of a, of a representation of what this model looks like and what it's gonna look like once it's output. Don't forget three fingers will roll the light round. So at this point, you should be forgetting all that lovely texture and material and everything that you've worked on because what you're looking at now is, have I got any problems with, with, with my, my print and, and can I do the things that I need for it to be um, stable on the desk? So this base clearly wouldn't be stable. So first of all, what we can do is just using the move tool, we can just big brush and we'll just bring this floor down a bit underneath. And what we're doing is we're, we're bringing it so it definitely goes through the floor. So you could have done this as you were designing um, and you, you, you could have been ready for this part. So you might not have to do this at this stage. And once you're happy that it's gone right, you know, right far down all the way through there, um, what you can do then is just make sure your perspective is off. So obviously on off make sure you're snapped so you're completely in orthographic mode snapped all the way this way because if you if you don't do this bit you will be off askew with your with the thing we're about to do so we're going to go to trim here on the left i'm going to go over here and use rectangular trim so it's here on the right on my machine and then what i can do now is i can just drag a trim line like this so i'll just go something like that and what that's done, go back to view so you can move around. What that's done is it's completely sheared it off. And that's exactly what we wanted because we've now got a completely flat base. Put your perspective back on now and you'll see what it looks like much more in the real world. And that would actually do it. We wouldn't need much more than that. And that's given us a lovely flat plane um, and that could just be output now, ready to, ready to go for 3D printing. So with 3D printing, you're going to want your uh, character or creature to stand up well on the desk. So one thing you can do is just add a base. So, and this is the most simple one of these tips really. So we have a base here, and of course we can do things to level off the bottom of that base, but let's think about adding another base to it. And it really is very simple. So I've got one already in here, and basically you just add a base at the bottom like this. So all I've done there is that's a black one, so you can't really see it very well. So let me change the color just so as you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna force paint that. So what I've done there is I've added in a cylinder at the bottom and it go, it stays on the, the flat plane. So if I make sure that perspective is off, which it is, and if I just do snap, you'll see that that is completely flat on the floor. And that's one great way to add just a level um, floor plane for your character or creature. Um, it depends on what your, your design is and whether it's gonna work for you, but you may, you may want to consider all kinds of different bases. And just, just to reiterate and just to remember, we get them or, or we can make them just out, out of primitives. So if I just wanted a cylinder, I could just call a cylinder from here, which is, it's down here and it's quite small, but um, you can see there, that's exactly what I've done, is just made a, a base from that cylinder. 
Um, so again, don't forget, you, you know, you, you've got plenty of other options. You can try things like cubes and you can even sculpt on these before you use them as a base. But don't forget the option of a base is there for you. With a 3D printer, you've got a limited amount of um, ability to handle polygons. Now, it's got a lot better recently and we can handle quite high polygon models uh, in our 3D printing software. And we're going to use um, a couple of different options for this model. We're going to use Lychee Slicer and we're going to use Chitterbox. And I'll put links to both of them down below. But, but irrespective of which slicer we use, it's better to optimize your model as much as you can. And that means bring the polygon count down. So I'll work on just this head because later on we, we're going to merge it into the body. But just for now, let's just have a look at the individual parts. So let's open up our scene and leave it pinned open. And let's just start looking at what we've got. So this head at the moment is 5.4 million polygons, which is ridiculous. It's super, super high res. So what you would always do at this point is you'd work through your model and bring the, the, the level of... Uh, polygons down a little bit. So how do you do that? So we come over to the topology tab and in the topology tab, it's changed a lot in the last few versions, but you come right over here to the right hand side and you've got your decimation tab here. It's not actually named in this version there, you can see, but underneath you've got decimation. And what you've got is a number of things. So it says target triangle. So this is the, the percentage number of, of, of triangles based on the fact that this is 100%. So 100% of 5 million is 5 million. So 50% will be 2.5 million. Um, and we want to go lower than that. So let's just do 10%. I'll, just, I'll do it roughly. You could tap in there and you could type in just 10 we want to preserve painting, which we do, and we'll leave uniform faces on and we'll ask it to decimate. So depending on your machine, that's going to take, you know, either a few seconds or, you know, or, or longer. Um, mine took about four seconds. Now, what it's got it down to now, you can see it there. But if I show you in here, this little number here, it's got it down to 546,000. So obviously it wasn't exactly five, you know, uh, you know, wasn't exactly 50% because it it does some rounding and messing around but that looks exactly the same and at half a million there we've we've you know we've significantly reduced it and we could go a lot further so let's let's just be ridiculous and go um let's take it down from um do the same thing again we'll do so of 500,000 let's do 10% again we'll decimate it should be much quicker this time and you can see it'll, it'll be done in just a couple of seconds. And what that will do is hopefully take that down to, if you think about the math there, we should be around the 50,000 mark. And as you can see now, we're at 54,700 just in here. So now, now that has probably lost some detail. So I probably wouldn't go that low just yet on, on, on this one. If you're only doing tabletop miniatures, you'll get away with it. You could reduce it quite low. But at the moment, that's too low for, for what I want. But what I like to do, if I'm going to do a full um, merge of the entire body and, get, and get, right, get one print of the whole thing, then I would go through each of these individual parts and I would bring them all down first. So this one was 18 million polygons when we started, and it's perfectly fine at that level while you're working on it, but that's kind of unwieldy when you're starting to think of doing something else with the model. So learn to learn to get a grip of the decimation feature and bring your models down when, when you can and when you need to. Okay, so what if we want to combine some of the, the models? Um, so let's have a look at these rocks for the moment. We've got quite a few rocks, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them all together. I'm going to look where they are so that I haven't named them in here, which isn't a good thing. But I'm going to put them all in the same area. So first one, second one, and there's another one down here. So I'll bring that into the, into the level. And is that another one there? Yeah, so we've got another one there. So we've got four rocks there, all in the, the same, um, uh, so, well, they're all selected now at this stage. Now, if you look at these, they're not huge compared to the rest of the model. So 900,000, 900,000, 900,000, you know, they're, they're not like the millions that we've got in, in the body, but they, they are quite substantial. Now, you can simple merge those. 
you can just hit simple merge and they're all one model now and you, you know that because when you select them the, the white outline just gives you the full selection so in theory you could 3d print that there's no there's no reason why not uh, and it's three and a half million so that's too that's too much really it's, it's way too many polygons um so what what you could have done instead of merging them with simple merge is you can bring them all together again so that's all of those and instead of doing what we did before with a simple merge we'll do a voxel merge and what that will do is we'll merge them all into one but it will actually clean out the inside the previous one just left them all intersecting so one was pushed inside the other so let's do a, a, a voxel merge i'll leave it at the, the resolution that it is there because let's just do um a wireframe on so you can see what's happening and you can see it's a huge amount of polygons and we'll just do a voxel merge and see what happens. So you can see what it's done there. It's actually merged them all together. Let's put the wireframe on. And there's no edges or seams now. They're, they're literally one model all welded into one, or certainly the bases, obviously. But it's too low polygon. So what, what we've got is something that's actually lost some of its detail. So I'm going to go back. So just undo it. Let's keep tapping, double tap until it goes back to where it was. So there you go, it's it's back to where it was. Go back and make sure we have the right things selected. Turn off that wireframe so we can see it a bit better. So that's all of them done now. And we'll do a voxel merge, but I'm going to go the other way now. I'm going to go too far. So I'm going to go up to about 300 on the voxel merge and watch what happens here. So first thing that you noticed is it's, it's took it took longer. And then if you look at the wireframe now, you can see it's still as high res as it was. But when you look deep inside, it's merged it all. And what that would mean is that inside, you know, it, it's again, it's completely cleared that out. So that 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 means now that, that, that this is literally one mesh. So it's one welded mesh. We'd already done the, 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 the base on this one, we leveled it off, and now all of them rocks are one piece. And the only thing you might want to do now is maybe decimate that lower um, to get it a lower polygon. But that would be an absolutely perfect way to, to um, merge things into one and to control the, the poly count a little bit using voxel merge. So I always model with the idea that things are in parts. So what you'll see with, with a lot of my models is the head, for example, is one separate object. Although it's not um, split ready for print yet because that neck was, you can see that that neck goes quite far inside. And the reason I keep it like that, so I've got something inside, is because I want to do a lot of posing like this before I finish my sculpt. And if you just basically make it so that it's flush one against the other and you want to then change that, you haven't got anything inside to, to work with. So uh, only at the end would we start doing, doing this. But if you can see now, all of my parts are separates. So um, it, it's not possible in all projects. So if you've got one very organic character um, and, and you want to... Uh, keep it as a single mesh because then all obviously all the parts are nice and nice and organic and nice and clean well you know you, you're not going to be able to do what I've done and keep them all separate like that but if you know that most of what you do is going to be for 3d printing then there's no reason that you can't do something like this so if it is that you happen to have built something that, that that's then too big as in there's too much of it and you need to um, then break it down for 3D printing, then probably what you want to do is start splitting it down. So all you do is take the part that you want to split down. So I'm going to take this one, for example. So this is the body and it's and it's way too much there. It's obviously, you know, it's way too long and complex if we're going to print it on a smaller printer. So I'm going to find an area that's logical for my split. So I'll do it. Um, let's try it there through the tail. I'm going to go to the tool of split or split tool. So drag down until you find split. Can't find it. Split. So select split and then use line in this case. And line does this. So I want to draw a line directly through. And straight away, you're going to see a problem. So I've done it this way to, to show you what, why it's a problem. So 
straight away, it, it did what we wanted. It split it off, but that line goes all the way through your scene. So look what's happened here. It's chopped the tail off. Now, now you may want that, but obviously we don't. That's not something that we want. So we want a, we want a different way of doing that so it doesn't affect um, anything else on the model. So instead of choosing line, we'll choose something like polygon. And polygon is this. So you can just tap around where you want, like so. If you want the line to be straight, just tap on it again and it goes straight. And we can add another one here and just encompass the thing that you want to split. So add another one here, add another one here, add another one here. And that just fully encompasses where you want. You can move the points to get them tighter and closer to your destination. And then when you're ready and you think that split is right, then just hit the green button. And what that will do is it'll split just that local area. So it does take a minute if you've got a big model like mine. But there you go. You've got your two parts split um, in, in a very, very simple, uh, clean line like so. And you can tell that it's like that because you can have a look at it now like that. So that's a great way. The splitting tool is something that you'd want to do a lot of um, when you're 3D printing, because you'd want to break it down into, into a logical area like that. Next video, we're going to look at how to do keying and getting ready to add keys. Now, keys we've done before on the channel, but now we've got some big characters coming through. It'd be a great time to show how you would join an arm to a body using a key that locks it in place. And that's a whole video in itself. So I didn't want to do that as a tip. So look out for that on the next video, which if you're watching this from the point that I post it, then it's going to be a week's time. I hope you're enjoying this content and if you are, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It does help me to get in front of other artists who might like this kind of content. Don't forget we do a full range of courses on Nomad and you can get those in the links down below. If you're willing to give us a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel and we can let you know when we upload new content.